Another structure uh, well visible in histological sections is cell nucleus. Let's provide some examples on how could be nucleus or more nuclei organized in cells. The most common situation uh, is a mononucleate cell. I will provide an example with a human fibroblast, mother cell of connective tissue that has single nucleus. So it would be mononucleate cell. An example would be fibroblast. Fibro, fibroblast. Okay. Some cells might have two nuclei, such as the car, some of the cardiac myocytes. So now I am drawing cardiac muscle cells that form a network and some small percentage has two nuclei. Mostly the cardiac muscle cells have a single nucleus. So it would be an example of a bi nucleate cells and that's the situation in some cardiac myocytes. Similarly in uh, some uh, liver cells, uh, namely the hepatocytes which are the epithelial cells of liver that are arranged in, in these uh, hepatic cords that could be branched so some, some percentage of the cell has two nuclei and it's, it's perfectly normal to see something like this. Some hepatocytes, which are epithelial cells of liver. Similarly, in, in the urinary passages, uh, the urinary passages uh, are lined with a special epithelium uh, called urothelium or transitional epithelium and now I'm referring to the surface cells which are large dome shaped and it's pretty common to find uh, two nuclei in some of these surface cells. Not the others, but the surface cells. They are referred as umbrella cells. Of transitional epithelium. Also known as the urothelium. Okay, what if there are more than two nuclei. A good example for this would be a multinucleated cell called osteoclast. It's a bone cell responsible for resorption of bone matrix. It's a special form of macrophages. So we got an example of multi nucleate cell such as the bone osteoclast it's a resorbing bone matrix another example would be a cell that is producing uh, blood platelets in the bone marrow it has these processes that become fragmented as thrombocytes but the nucleus there's a whole ring of nuclei. They all could be even partially connected with each other, not completely separated. So the cell underwent a division of cell, nucle of cell nucleus without the divide dividing the cell. 
So these are megakaryocytes. As another example of multinucleate cell. Another example could be uh, giant multinucleated cells. That's the that's the name. The nuclei might be found in the periphery, forming such a ring, or they could be in various other configurations. These are actually fused macrophages. Giant multi nucleated cells. Uh, it's a fusion of several more macrophages. Phagocytes, okay, and they occur as uh, foreign bodies, giant cells surrounding foreign ma particles of foreign mar materials in human tissues, or as uh, so called Langhan cells in tuberculosis. Other examples of multinucleate elements would be skeletal muscle fibers. Skeletal muscle fibers originate via fusion of a series of embryonic cells and the result is a multinucleated fiber. I just add the cross striation just to remind us of the fact that it's it's a uh, skeletal muscle fiber. Well, I could have added distraction to the cardiac muscle cells as well. Couldn't I? Because it's there. So, uh, this is uh, a multi, multi, sorry, multi nucleate uh, skeletal. of fiber. Please note that the nuclei are always in the periphery and they originate via merging of multiple embryonic cells called myoblasts. This is also called syncytium. Where multiple cells fu uh, are fusing. Syncytium. Another example of syncytium in the human body occurs on the surface of the uh, chorionic villi, where the first surface layer, if we have a cross section through an M, through an uh, chorionic villus, chorion is one of the fetal membranes uh, that constitute the the fetal part of placenta. Right? You can see multinucleate layer where uh, nuclei have divided but the cells did not. So it's usually dark but more nuclei. We call it syn CTO trophoblast layer and it's responsible for invading into the wall of the uterus and being part of the barrier between the blood of the mother and blood of the embryo. It's on the surface of these structures, which is one of the many chorionic villi. Which are the villi of the placenta. On the opposite, there are elements in human body that has no nuclei. A good example would be mature red blood cells. So these are anucleate elements. 
because the precursors of erythrocytes that are called erythroblast they have lost their nuclei they've extruded it they they get, got rid of it so a mature blood cell has no nucleus similarly if speaking about blood you will find you'll find uh, some small elements that have some granules in the center uh, these would be thrombocytes so blood platelets or thrombocytes which are actually fragments of these mother cells, megakaryocytes but this structure inside is not a cell nucleus these are only granules Okay, so these are also annucleate elements or cell fragments So these are not even cells. Let's consider also uh, mitotic figures because these nuclei are in the interface uh, when there is no cell division, but when there is a cell division, some mitosis, you can find mitotic figures of nucleus. So how can you tell in the microscope on what phase of the mito mito mitosis I'm looking at? I will provide four examples only, like the most typical. This will be prophase, sorry, prophase. Metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So during mitosis, the DNA uh, gets organized into chromosomes, which become visible in histological sections. And in prophase, when the when the nuclear membrane uh, dissolves and the, nu the nucleolus dissolves. You can, you can often see a spiralized body of chromosomes. It's called the spireme. Or spiral-like chromosomes. The chromosomes in the metaphase are organized in the equatory, equatorial plane, so that's called monaster. This figure, I can tell this cell occurs pro most probably in metaphase, while in anaphase you have already duplicated chromosomes being transported to the opposite poles of the uh, with the mitotic spindle, so we call it diaster. There are like two objects, and uh, in the telophase, you already got chromosomes in the region of the future daughter cells because the cell got separated, we got the cytokinesis here in progress, so this is called a D dispiram, like this piram, this is dispiram. One more concept when regarding uh, regarding the relative size of nucleus, nucleus is a nuclear cytoplasmic ratio which actually tells you what is the proportion between the volume of the nucleus and the volume of the cytoplasm. Now it's not a rule that would be applicable in all cells of the human body, but sometimes it happens that mature cells, differentiated cells, have this ratio like 2 to 1 or 1 to 1 or less. 
while their counterparts, their precursors, uh, immature cells, sometimes have more active nucleus with a uh, larger volume and uh, just a few cytoplasm. So then that's where the ratio could be uh, greater. But this is not true in, in, in some other cells of the human body. An example representing uh, exception from this, that rule, that's actually not a rule, but like a tendency in some cell lineages, would be, for, for example, a mature lymphocyte, one of the immune cells that has a, a round-shaped nucleus and only very, very thin rim of cytoplasm. So the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio would be here like 4 to 1, but still it's a mature lymphocyte. So don't think about it as a universal rule, but more like more like a tendency in some in the maturation of some cell lineages.